everyone, and welcome to this episode of Arizona Backyard Naturalist. I'm your host, Jenny Ushry, an Arizona Master Naturalist intern from the South Mountain Chapter. I live on the foothills of South Mountain in suburban Phoenix, Arizona, and every week I take a look to see what's happening in my own backyard and give tips and tricks to help other backyard naturalists in the area identify and learn more about the local environment. This week's episode of Backyard Naturalist is a mammal episode! Yes, that's right. We're taking a break from birds this week to talk about my favorite mammal of the Sonoran Desert, the javelina, also called the collared peccary, also known in Latin as peccari tayaku. Y'all, I love javelina. I moved to Phoenix in 2008, and on my very first trip to the Phoenix Zoo, I fell in love with these sweet little babies. Look at them! I think they're adorable. Um, a lot of people think that javelina are related to pigs or boars, which they are, but only distantly. Um, they belong to the same taxonomic order, Arteodactylia, um, along with hippos, giraffes, pronghorns, goats, um, cattle. Um, a good way to think about this is to think about humans, which belong to the taxonomic order primates, along with lemurs, monkeys, orangutans, gorillas, chimps, etc. Um, so they're related to pigs, but they are not pigs. Um, adult javelina are about 20 inches tall and weigh between 40 and 60 pounds. They're like a small golden retriever. Um, they have short, coarse hair like a wild boar with this brown and gray kind of salt and pepper coloration. Um, and the reason that they're called colored peccaries is because of this lighter band, as you can see right here, um, this lighter band that's happening around the neck and shoulder area. Um, javelina typically eat shrubs, grass, mesquite pods, cactus, roots, tubers, um, whatever they can kind of find when they're out foraging, but they will eat a lot of different things, including food waste and trash, unfortunately. Please do not feed the javelina. Um, javelina do live in close proximity to humans in the Phoenix area. I have a friend who lives just off of Central Avenue, just south of Thomas, right in the heart of Midtown Phoenix, um, who looked outside of her window one morning to discover javelina in her front yard. Um, and this can cause some issues. Javelina have really poor eyesight, so there have been some issues with people walking up on javelina, particularly while walking their dogs, um, and the javelina reacting defensively. This might mean charging, this might mean um, clacking their teeth at you. They also make these kind of barking and growling sounds. All of those are uh, de defensive behaviors. Um, this is particularly true when they have young in their group, which can happen at any point in the year. So the best thing to do if you do see a javelina is to just back off and go in a different direction. Um, there have been a few instances of javelina biting humans, but these are almost always associated with humans trying to feed them. So do not feed the javelina and you will be fine. Um, one interesting thing about javelina is that they travel and associate in family groups. This is usually in the range of maybe seven to 10 family members, but much larger groups, up to 52 animals have been observed. Um, when they have babies, they tend to have twins, um, and those babies are up and moving with the group uh, within a few hours of being born. Um, another interesting and notable thing about javelina is their scent. They have a very distinctive musky scent that helps family members um, identify each other. Again, their eyesight is very poor, um, and it also helps mark their territory. The scent comes from a gland on their back near the rump, and it's really noticeable when they're in groups. Um, members of family groups will perform what's called a javelina handshake. Um, it's where they rub their cheek onto the hip of um, a family member to kind of distribute this scent among the family members. Um, so you might see these sweet, stinky little guys in the washes in the wilds of urban and suburban Phoenix, or you can visit the group at the Phoenix Zoo next time you visit. Um, their habitat is near the top of the Arizona Trail section of the zoo. Remember, if you do see them out and about in nature, it's best for you to just turn around and go the other way. Um, for more information on Havelina, you can visit any of these sites, which are also linked below in the info box. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Arizona Backyard Naturalist.